the fast bluegrass and stuff. But really, some of the greatest things he ever did were those beautiful slow tunes like John just uh, brought up there. Yeah. Yeah, well, goes to show you have your heart broken enough times at a young age, and great beauty comes from it. <laughs> How many mandolin pickers do we have hanging around here? We got here? some pickers. All right. And you know, it would be fun maybe to turn the workshop format backwards. Does anybody want to have something to say here about what attracted them to the mandolin or what was their experience uh, kind of discovering the magic of it? It travels well, yeah. It travels well out here. <laughs> True, there are times boarding a plane. I'm glad I'm, glad I'm not a bass player. <laughs> yeah. You have your hand up there, sir. Any advice for an adult learner over somebody younger? Are, are you part, are you in a relationship? <laughs> well, it helps if you're both playing mainland then, yeah, I guess. They are, they are, yeah. <laughs> they are. Hey, I got a question for you guys. What do you do with a guy named harmonica? What do I do with one? A harmonica? I got nothing. I don't know how to play the harp, so... Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm asking, is it cool if I play something? Uh, I think we only have a little time. Uh, they do the mandolin thing, but yeah, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But you know, for, for an adult beginning to learn, I mean, there, there's so many wonderful resources out there, especially now on the internet. I mean, the, the number of things you can find, both in terms of teaching and, and, and just, uh, you know, having the whole history of the music at your fingertips. Search down YouTube, find a Sam Bush video. Uh, you know, <laughs> And, and the, 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 you know, method books uh, have come such a long, long way, too. Right, and, and we do have teaching videos now, but I mean, as far as just the things to think about, you know, it's like, uh, if you, say, if you're going to start playing mandolin, and you've already played guitar, if you've already been a guitar player, for instance, then you already know... The, 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 uh, the joy of strumming. And that's the, the, the uh, as a person that plays mandolin and fiddle, um, I, you know, I, I started on mandolin, and, and for me that was a great aid, aid when I started on fiddle because because a fretted instrument already showed me where the notes were. Whereas uh, for me, I think it would have been much more difficult to start on fiddle and then mandolin. But uh, but there's just but a, but a couple things. I mean. Ask Sir Paul McCartney. You can learn yes. three chords and write a song and record it. And he did on mandolin, and it's a pleasing sound, and I dig it. I like it. I. It's about ten years old. Does anybody remember what it? I remember when it came out. Yeah, I and it, it was just a simple strum. That's okay. Uh, but but I mean, you can you can start having fun on a mandolin pretty quickly once you get the darn thing in tune. <laughs> that's a but we have electronic tuners now that I didn't have as a kid, so that's great. But I mean, really, you could just, uh, you know. That's the great thing about this instrument. You can have fun strumming it pretty quickly into your first, you know, entrance into learning about it. And then the other thing I would recommend that a lot, especially bluegrass players, I've learned over the years, um, didn't that you know basically started out just playing songs, just playing trying, yeah, and and playing Bill Monroe tunes and what have you. But really, the the best thing you can do for your finger exercises is to just learn to start playing scales and uh, and also it can also teach you because one of the thrills of playing mandolin is back you know up and down picking 
And so as you learn your scales, for instance, here's one in the key of D. I mean, it's your major scale. All down strokes. So that's just all down strokes. And so then you can now try going up and down motions with that scale. And you will find that, you know, it takes a little while to make your strokes the same volume, your upstroke as loud as your downstroke, perhaps. Okay, so that, start, that D is using, of course, your third string is your D string. And, and then once you're familiar with that scale, the great thing about a mandolin is tuned in fifths, so your fingerings can kind of transfer over to other strings sometimes. Okay. Now you go up to what I figure, what I call, you know, sort of a bluegrass D chord, and try playing the same scale. Try playing that without any open strings. That's a new challenge. So you've moved up, and this will also get you using your little finger, and it can—it's literally based around this chord. So it's same notes, different position. And then you can also move it on up one more octave to use uh, all your, it's getting your little finger working, that's always a trick. <laughs> so really just learning scales with different positions, uh, that can be uh, a, a great aid. Then as you learn more tunes, you see how that really applies in fiddle tunes a lot. Uh, Sam makes a great point about you know the, the simple chord shapes that you can get so much sound out of with it. But you know, there's another thing in terms of a beginner and wanting to just sort of amuse yourself, play some sounds. There's a quality to the mandolin that I don't know if you find as readily with the guitar. When you think of it as a, a what we could refer to as drones, just open strings that fit together and you know it kind of falls into where all this music comes from the old celtic modal sound but you can entertain yourself for a good long time with your mandolin with, say, just putting your finger up here on the seventh fret which is d and droning through the d and the a string above So well too. Dance tonight. Everybody gonna dance tonight. Is that a oh, yeah. I mean, one time I was uh, I, I had done I had done an interview for uh, 
publication. <laughs> I interviewed for a publication and, and they said, what do you think the most famous mandolin solo is? I said, Maggie May, what do you think? I said, because people know that that don't even know what a mandolin is. They know that that's that great sound at the end of the Rod Stewart song. And, and I happen to say that, uh, and, and on Rod Stewart's original record, it did not give the mandolin player credit. It, it said something to the effect of the, the mandolin player from Linda's Farm, I can't remember his name. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't me. But, uh, but it is, the, you know, and, and case in point, the guy, uh, uh, he reached out to me and we spoke on the phone. And his name's Ray Jackson. And uh, I said, Ray, you know you've played the most famous male in the in the world. He goes, yeah, I'm a guitar player. <laughs> It is the most famous man still in the world. <laughs> and uh, that that's a good that's a good thought in that. Sometimes those of us that devote our life to this instrument, and I mean, we, we bust our brains learning everything we can learn, all the different techniques, all the different rhythm techniques, what have you. And, um, and I know it's a, it can be kind of strange as a, I, I'm you know, a session, recording session player in Nashville and, um, as well. And sometimes I have found that uh, uh, especially on like country records where they're just looking for a, a few simple phrases like such as a man you may kind of thought that us with all our mandolin knowledge sometimes we don't come up with an obvious line that fits the song as well as that one was the perfect capper was for that tune so uh, just because we're sitting here with all our mandolin knowledge sometimes a guitar player that also plays the mallet might come up with a better phrase than we did to suit that song. So the, the bottom line is, play to suit the song you're playing, whatever that song is. A hot lick in the middle of a waltz, you know, who cares, right? Did you play, did you serve that song? That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely it. Always you know, in service of the song and finding the uh, simplest of things that's gonna stay with people much more than trying to get, you know, the hot mandolin lick in there that'll drive some other mandolin player crazy sitting there online, slowing it down, trying to learn it. <laughs> Which one will play, John? Uh... <laughs> I think they've already picked your voice. Shand up right now, see you later. <laughs> What can we do against it? Uh, going low ground? Or? Sure. Sure. And, and, and fiddle tunes are an obvious thing to play on the man. I mean, it's right there for you. And, and when I was growing up, we listened. Uh, my father was a fiddle player and a farmer that also played the fiddle. And um, he had records by the great Tommy Jackson, a great old Opry fiddler. And so that was... Fortunately, I started playing fiddle tunes before I really heard bluegrass music. Before I, I knew who Bill Monroe was. I grew up around Nashville, but it was the fiddle tunes. And so, uh, I, one of the best examples I ever heard of this tune played on the mandolin when I was a kid was the Osborne Brothers made a bluegrass instrumental album. And Bob Osborne, I mean, I'm not sure Bobby Osborne is as appreciated as he should be as one of the great mandolin players of bluegrass. But he really is, and uh, so Bobby played it more like a fiddler played. Bill Monroe didn't really uh, like the way a fiddler might play this tune. John, I'm about to do. Where Bill Monroe might go. Legit, but it was, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, so that's, uh, uh, anyway, if you ever, maybe you can find online the Osborne Brothers instrumental album. It's really a classic, man. And Bobby was uh, at the top of his game when they made that. There's, there's drums on that record, if I remember, right? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Probably the Osborne Brothers. Yeah. 